Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, couldn't have picked a better video to uh, to start watching. First I want to say I hope everybody had a wonderful New Year's. Um, kind of getting a late jump on things here. Uh, I planned on getting a video out kind of in the beginning of the year, but uh, you know, with, you know, we've had family and just some things have been, um, made it a little bit more difficult for me to get a video out. Plus I started uh, dyeing some feathers and well, that turned into something a little bit more than I anticipated again, but um, that turned out pretty well. So today's video, I am tying a Jock Scott. Uh, it's a fly that I'm pretty sure most of you have heard of or seen. Um, really one of the more beautiful flies. It's got a lot of different uh, feathers in it and um, it can be a bit of a challenge to to tie but in, in all reality if you think about it if you can tie a uh, married wing fly you can tie a jock scott just about. It does have a couple of things that make it a little bit more difficult to tie but um, it's really not that much different than other married wing flies so i'm just uh building a quick little underbody not really a major one um i'm not doing a whole huge long thickening process of the whole body this is just to smooth out all the uh thread right there that i just laid down and then it's just going to add just a little bit of thickness and taper to it right here so I figure I could just talk while I do this really quick. I will leave the recipe for this uh, as I tie it because I am using substitute materials. Um, so I will leave a recipe in the description below and um, I'll also have the name of some material suppliers of where you can find some materials. I think that's good enough. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with this pattern, uh, the Jock Scott is, um, the back half of the fly is um, yellow silk. Oh, yes, I got these for Christmas. These are uh, Dr. Slick's razor scissors, and I absolutely love these. These things are great. So nice and sharp, and I can get right into tight places and uh, make such closer cuts. This is just a little bit of uh, Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. That'll just keep that part from unraveling and we'll kind of hold the, it'll seep in and then I'll hold that to the, uh, the hook itself. So the back half is yellow floss. The front, I've seen it tied with black floss. And I've also seen it with um, black seals fur. So I think this time I'm going to do black seals fur. I don't know if there is a um, someone who has written about it, and that was part of their pattern, and that's how they did it. Um, that is possible, I guess, which may be why I've seen it that way. But uh, I'm going to do it with black seals fur. With the hackle and everything, it does look pretty good. Boy, this is kind of lumpy, though. I 
I'm also using real gut uh, for this one. The hook uh, is a Partridge CS6. Um, this is a 5 0, but this is an older, an older hook. Um, obviously, they don't make blind eye hooks anymore, but this one, um, I had gotten this from a fly shop uh, a little while back. And I really like the way they look. I mean, it doesn't have quite the same look to it as the modern, well, more modern CS6 hooks. Okay, so we'll start with our tinsel. This is a small uh, silver Vivas tinsel. Do three turns of that. do this time instead of cutting it off here I'm going to run it up underneath the tag and then cut it off right about where the butt's gonna start and that'll that'll just Hide that pretty well. I'm just using my fingernail to push that down in a little bit and flatten that out. That way when I wrap my floss, it doesn't show. start the floss that I'm using is the Oveil silk this is a darker deeper yellow than the uh, Japanese silk that I have and for this one uh, I'm going with some deeper brighter colors uh, it's the spool of the Oveil You can look up like 54 Dean Street, or even if you looked up Ovale, um, it'll pop right up. It's it's a pretty popular, becoming a pretty popular floss. They've also got silk threads that you can you can buy as well. I'm just putting on my uh, my gloves for wrapping the silk. Okay, so these are actual these are silk glove liners. Um, I got them off of Amazon. Well, I got them for um, my birthday, but they came from Amazon. I think they were only like 20 bucks. I believe they're called uh, Arctic Bear, if you want to look them up. I'd say they're worth it. Sure those are even and what I'm doing is I'm just doubling the floss and then just use your fingers to smooth it out and flatten it out as you wrap it and take your time with it you don't need, you don't need to hurry so make sure you every wrap that you make is the wrap that you want
And you want to watch that hook point on your gloves as well. That'll chew those, chew these gloves right up. You know, I did this in the last video too with this floss. It's just too thick to do a double. I don't like how that butt came out. So, let's try. Try to split it. Looks like there's five strands, so I'm going to try to take three. Okay. All I did was just separate three out at the tip and then hold on it the rest of the way, and it just separated nicely. again. And then we're going to go past our the point that we were at. Just a little bit. That'll just make sure it gets tied in properly. And that way you don't see a tie off point either. I did switch over to the Vivas 12O, and um, so far I, I really do like this thread. The only thing I don't like is the uh, the line twist. I um, the Lagarden thread is the way it's made. It's it, they they wrap it counterclockwise, or it's it's made in such a way that it doesn't have line twist. So as you wrap on the hook your your thread your thread just doesn't twist up um which i i found to be quite nice i really did enjoy that but i also found that you know the 70 in your threads were i don't know they broke a lot a lot more than i cared for so i tried this uh vivas 12o and yeah so far i i love it So that's our tip and tag. Now we'll do the tail and the tail veiling. And it looks like we've got a nice smooth transition right there. There's not much of a step. And this would be the this is the tail I chose for it. Yeah, I'll make sure you're getting it. And I figure we'll tie in right about there. I 
and I'm just stripping away some of that outer stuff. But on one side, I'm going to clip it. Then you don't have to clip them. Um, clipping them does, I feel, give your thread something to grip on too. We want that to bend down a little more. There we go. I think it just gives your thread something to hold on to, so that way your feather doesn't, your your tail doesn't roll too much. I'm just going to take a couple more. That was good. There was just a little uh, stump from one of the things I clipped off one of the barbs. And I could see it down by the tag. Okay, here we go. I like that. All right, next is our tail veiling, which is Indian Crow, but in this case, I'm just gonna use uh, an Indian Crow sub. Um, it's the same one I've been using that uh, Ryan Houston makes. Uh, he sells this on eBay. So if you're interested in uh, some Indian Crow sub that's rather nice, um, check out his eBay listings. I do believe it just is uh, Ryan Houston's Indian Crow sub, so you can just search that right out and um, it should come up with it. I'll see if I can find the listing and leave a link. I just use my thumbnail to kink the stem in a little bit, like right here, and that'll help set it up a little bit so it doesn't push down on the tail too much. Also helps sometimes when you're tying it in to uh, wet it a little bit.
I'm happy with that as well. Okay, and now the uh, the butt is just black ostrich roll. I'll just take a piece from here. That's good. That's good. Now, some guys will tell you to strip it off of the stem rather than uh, cut it like that. But that's because when you strip it off the stem, it'll leave like a little curl piece at the bottom, which is actually nice to tie in with. Um, this works just as good. Just take this and strip off a little bit just like that. And that little bit is perfect, just enough to tie in with. So at this point now, you want to use a little bit of wax. So I'll grab your cobbler's wax. Now, I my house is rather cold. Um, it's just easier for me to live that way and breathe that way. So my wax is a little bit firmer. So I like to just hit it with a lighter really quick. And then give it a second afterwards. And right as it's firming back up, is about the perfect time to wax up my thread. And we're going to put kind of a heavier layer of it here. And the wax is going to help kind of keep that pearl from slipping um, as you wrap it. Just use this little tab here that you made. Now when you wrap, you always want to... I always tie it in this way with the fuzzy side on top and the stem part on the bottom. And then you can pull it towards you and then pull upwards. And that'll start off giving you a very nice um, turn and start to your, your hurl wrap. Let's kick it back just a hair. Now as you see that uh, we're kind of wrapping over some of that flaw, so you can see that leaves quite a nice transition. I broke the tip off this hurl. It's a little short to work with. I'm just going through and flattening all of this out now. On top here where that stem was, I'm trying to blend that all in a bit. Okay, so now the ribbing for this is going to be... I'm going to use medium Vivas oval tinsel.
I was debating on using large, but... I think the medium will do just fine. And I'm going to bring that right up to... about here. Almost just past the midway point. This fly is a 50-50 fly. Half yellow, half black. So I'm going to remove a little bit of that outer sheathing just to give it a little bit better of a transition. That makes me nervous about shit that tinsel showing through. I'm going to hitch this back and just use this to tie in right here. I think that's a better option. Yeah, see that's, that's going to be much smoother. Okay. And sometimes, you know, I do like to be a little bit on the precise side. So, let's see. This is... Well, if I went straight to the tip, I'd be off. But since I'm going to here, I think that's about right. Sounds good anyway, right? Okay, so we'll go all the way up. And again, I'm going to use the same Oval Yellow Silk. I'm going to leave all five strands in, but just tie it in single. One thing I don't like about the silk gloves is that I can't twist the thread or twist the silk uh, one way or another as easily.
Usually as I'm wrapping I can twist it uh, with my fingers and that will help keep it from getting too thick in some spots and it can still be twisted it's just not as easy. hope this floss burnishes out a little bit because this does look a little lumpy to me. It happens when I take a week off from tying. This, by the way, is the actual first fly of 2023, so we'll, uh, we'll see how, uh, how the year starts off. So far, I'm pretty happy with it. And then just like before, we'll go back over where we tied in just a little. Take off my gloves. Pencil. Okay, 
I think I'm going to do five wraps, four or five wraps right here. for it is. And then what I'm going to do here is pinch this down and kind of kink it right here. And I'm going to pinch that and I'm going to keep this here because I'm going to use this again to rib the front section. First I've got to tie in my veilings. Make sure I'm happy with my tinsel placement. Alright, so the veilings I'm doing are, uh, I'm using CDC, which is Col de Canard. They're small, um, fluffy feathers. I'm not 100% sure what part of the bird they actually come from, um, but they work great for a toucan sub. So, same thing, we'll just kink the stem a little bit to give it get it to rise up a little bit off the off the body like that and you can kind of lay it all together if you can get it to stay above the stem sometimes you can get it to cooperate enough to tie it all in And it'll give it a really nice fluffy look. This crow veiling's a little off and being a bit obnoxious. That's better. Then we'll take our toucan veiling on the bottom. Same thing. Just kink that a little. Sometimes that tinsel being there can make a little havoc, make that feather not sit quite straight. A lot of times when I tie this, that's why I don't typically do this. with the tinsel. I usually cut the tinsel and then tie it back in again. I 
Okay, I like that too. Okay, next is uh, black ostrich roll. Again. So we'll just take our feather. Well, let's strip one off, I'll show you what I was talking about earlier. Alright, so if I had stripped it off the stem and continued on, the other ones would have stripped off as well. But it pretty much strips, it strips off with this. You see how that's curled like that? And that works as, you know, a nice little tie-in point as well. But I really do like doing it the other way. Or I just strip a little piece off here. Just my preference. You can do it either way, really. Alright. I'll wax on the thread. That's a lot. Like I said, fuzzy side up and stem side down. Tie that in horizontal and then just take this and pull it out so it's 90 degrees and then pull up and that should give you a nice start. There you go. The ostrich roll saying that I couldn't do one more. It's always when I want to get that one more turn. Really trying to keep the tinsel as far to the underside as possible. For those of you guys that are starting out and, you know, maybe you're watching this, uh, you know, you're just starting to tie flies and you found this. Um, I'm not sure what you're set up with for a vise, but you can really see how much a rotary vise, you know, makes a big difference in what you can do with your fly. And, you know, being able to rotate it and see all angles really does help. <clears throat> 
I mean, you can tie a very nice fly with a stationary vise, but if you're going to tie, you know, classic salmon flies or anything like that, um, anything above and beyond, like smaller trout flies, I really do suggest a um, rotary vise of some sort. All right, I'm switching over to black thread now. No, I didn't want that thread though. It's 150. Nope, I want to switch over to Vivas 12 0 black. Hold on a moment. All right, I got my black thread here. There we go. That's better. Okay, so the uh, tinsel on this portion of the body is not just the um, oval, but there's also some flat tinsel as well. So, let's see what size. Yes. I'm using a flat Mylar tinsel. I just don't, I, at the moment I don't have any um, flat metal tinsel that's this color, this size. So. And since we want silver, we're going to tie this in silver side up. And you're going to tie it on the back side of that um, oval tinsel. And then right up against this, you're also going to um, tie in the hackle. This is a uh, neck hackle. It's a Chinese neck hackle. I'm not sure the make of it. Um, I got it on eBay. It was uh, it came with a giant lot of uh, other hackles. So I'm not sure who makes it. It just came in a bag of strong hackle. And we'll tie that in on the near side of the uh, oval tinsel. Not sure if that was me or not. You now, when you're when you're getting up close to uh, even your oval tinsels, when they are turned and wrapped around a hook, uh, some of that sheathing can stick out and be sharp. Um, looking at yeah, if you look at the tip of the thread, that wasn't a break. That looked like it was cut. careful around the tinsels. Sometimes I forget.
Okay. So seals for the seals for I'm using. Um, I did not get from Feathers MC. Uh, they came from again another lot on eBay. Um, and that's all it is. Just black seals for dubbing. Again, we're just going to use a little bit of wax. I need a lot, just enough. And you can make the, the dubbing, you know, tight. You can make it a little bit loose. Uh, it depends on how thick you want it to be. I don't want it to be terribly thick and bushy. I think I've said this before, but uh, for those of you that are new, the, when you're twisting your dubbing, always twist it in one direction. You don't want to go, you don't want to be going like this back and forth with it. Um, that's not going to get it to stay on there. You really got to have it. You got to go one direction, and uh, that's usually counterclockwise. And sometimes when you're wrapping it, um, wrapping your thread. You might have to retwist it, but if you stick with just the clockwise motion each time, you should be fine. And then at the end, pull all the fibers backwards, and then I always just come back over it a little bit. We'll start with our flat tinsel first. I really would have liked to have more than three turns, but...
if we did more than three turns it would look very very crowded I suppose I could have gone with a smaller yellow section but I think it's still gonna be okay And here I'm just plucking away a little bit of a tie-off point. Get those out of the way for the thread and you can tie off nice and neat. And here we go, not paying attention again. And once again, I let the uh, Pencil cut my thread. That's okay, as long as we don't panic, we can still recover.
Okay. The throat is guinea hackle, so I'm going to find one here. The guinea hen skins really are not all that expensive, and you get a ton of feathers with a skin. I think um, I think I paid like twenty-five dollars for this one, and it's just it's amazing. There's yeah, that's too big. Uh, there's so many feathers on here that um, are usable. It's pretty incredible. I think that's going to be too long as well. I can show you this quick. So, as you can see, here's the back and the shoulders and you know the breast feathers and everything there's there's plenty here um, more than enough for you know years worth of tying so uh, keep an eye out I got this one off of Etsy there's a store there that had it a little large back there but Up there's good. I still think. Yeah, that's still going to be a bit too big. There's more than enough feathers here to take some out and dye some, or the uh, possibilities are endless. I mean, if you're just tying for yourself and you're just tying for fun, um, one of these for, for what they cost, I mean, there's plenty of, oh no, it's still too long. That's what I mean. There's so many feathers here that uh, even picking shorter ones is that's better. Okay, I like that one. <clears throat> I was really trying to have everything prepped and ready to go, but uh, this one, yeah, I completely forgot about this one. And that I was going to have to pluck it. Okay, so. For this one, we'll just pull away all the fluff. And that'll be our tie-off point. We'll be using that. And then to tie in, we'll strip away to about here, because this shorter stuff is not quite long enough for the throat anyway, so take that. Trim it down. And then shorten it. And then we'll tie it in and then I always lock it back just take that fold it back wrap a couple times over that that way when you go to wrap it on it won't pull out on you and then I'll just take these here fold them back as I wrap it and you want to keep those facing backwards 
and just keep pulling them back as you wrap and wrap slowly slowly and methodically make sure that you are wrapping nice and neat touch and turns say that my last wrap was not touching. So I feel like this is going to have a big head. I might be able to save it though. I think I need new batteries. So far, I think we're doing good. I'm happy with that. All right, so that's the bottom half of our Jock Scott Classic Salmon Fly, and uh, we'll do the uh, top half in part two. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. That helps me know that uh, I'm doing a good job, and it helps me keep creating content for you guys. Um, and if you got any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to get to them as soon as I can. I'm usually pretty good about it. So, uh, uh, other than that, have yourselves a wonderful day, and I will see you in part two. Take care.